nanotechnology is the science of particles in the very small size. One nanometer is 10 million times smaller than one centimeter. A red blood cell has the size of 5,000 nanometers. If we can design a nanoparticle in the size of 100 nanometers, this nanoparticle can penetrate easily the red blood cells 50 times smaller than the cell. Thus, nanotechnology allowed us to interfere in the body at the cell level, whereas previously we could interfere in the body only at the organ level. Cancer is treated by chemotherapy based on very potent drugs, but very toxic. Such drug molecules can kill cancer cells, but unfortunately they can distribute also in healthy cells close to the tumor cell. And sometimes they can elicit side effects that force us to stop the treatment. Drug targeting is the science of accumulation of drug loaded in nanoparticles inside cancer cells. How we are performing such drug targeting? Normally, cancer cells overexpress receptors on their membrane 10 times more or even 1,000 times more than in healthy cells. If we can identify an antibody that can bind specifically to these receptors, we can then attach such an antibody to a nanoparticle containing the drugs and we can directly the drug-loaded nanoparticle to the cancer cells, sparing the healthy cells. We can accumulate high concentration of drugs in the cancer cells while the healthy cells in the neighborhood are spared and continue to be safe. EGFR is common to a variety of human cancers and is also found to be overexpressed in most cases of lung cancer. We have attached antibodies recognizing specifically this receptor to nanoparticles loaded with paclitaxel. Paclitaxel is a taxin potent drug very active in solid tumors. We have shown that these nanoparticles can accumulate in lung cancer and be very efficient in the treatment of lung cancer in animals as compared to the marketed drug in the market. We have shown also that over antibodies can be attached to nanoparticles containing over cytotoxic drugs. In fact, today we can improve markedly the chemotherapy by focusing and enhancing the drug concentration in the cancer cells as compared to the normal commercial products in the market. So in our lab, we are investigating virus-like particles and their potential applications in creation of vaccines and drug delivery. So basically applications of virus-like particles for medicinal purposes. So virus, morphologically, is a protein shell in which DNA or RNA genome is embedded. If we take the genome out from here by molecular means, then we can obtain virus-like particles. So essentially, this is a virus without nucleic acid inside. And these virus-like particles have several applications. So you can pack these virus-like particles with various materials, like some toxins or metal nanoparticles. And then you can decorate the surface of these virus-like particles with various addresses which recognize various cell types in human organisms. For example, tumor cells, toxic material, now attaches to this tumor cell and delivers the toxic drugs inside the tumor cell specifically. We think that uh, nanomedicine can actually be used to treat uh, diseases of poverty and in particular malaria. It's just a matter of being ingenious to uh, design uh, nanovectors. Malaria is one of the main health concerns worldwide with several hundred million cases annually and more than one million deaths according to current estimates. Most of the cases of malaria occur in developing countries, mainly in Africa. Malaria is transmitted to humans by mosquitoes when they bite to take a blood meal and it is caused by um, uh, parasites uh, of the genus Plasmodium, which is a unicellular protist. We have been trying to eradicate malaria for more than a hundred years using a whole arsenal of strategies that go from trying to design good vaccines or deploying several anti-malarial drugs that have been popping out. However, this has been a very difficult task and today we're still far from eradicating the disease. We have developed a couple of uh, nanovector prototypes. 
We have two main prototypes that are on their way to clinical trials. One is based on a liposomal nanocapsule where we have been using lipid bilayers containing antimalarial drugs where the targeting element is antibody or also a glycosaminoglycan like heparin. And the second type of nanovector, which is closer to clinical application, is based on polymeric structures, polyamidomine polymers, which have a specific targeting towards red blood cells infected by plasmodium and which can also be loaded with antimalarial drugs. And they actually show very good efficacy. In the future, we must think about new strategies, maybe uh, designed to uh, deliver uh, nanovectors, not to the human, but to the mosquito, and that could be uh, maybe the first um, uh, strategy designed to cure a mosquito with the final goal of, in the end, uh, curing a human and eradicating uh, malaria. IRANET Euronanomed 2, which is funded within the seventh framework program of the European Commission, is a network of 20 funding organizations from 17 countries and regions from European and associated states. We aim at coordinating national and regional research programs on nanomedicine. This field takes the advantage of the physical, chemical, and biochemical properties of materials at the nanometer scale to be used for diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up of diseases. The main activity of Euronanomed 2 is the joint transnational calls for research proposals in nanomedicine. Among additional activities are supporting young researchers and organizing seminars and workshops on the regulatory and safety issues of nanotechnology in medicine.